Good morning, morning, everyone. Again, my name is uh, Inspiring Minister Dowling, and I'm coming before you. First of all, Port of Paul has already been established, but I give honor to God, who's truly the head of my life. I give honor to my pastor, who's the shepherd of this house, and my beautiful first lady, Wanda, and their family. Let's bow our heads. Lord, I come before you this morning, God, giving you honor and praise to your holy name. Thanking you for another day that we have never seen. Lord, just thanking you for allowing me to stand before your people, God, asking you to be, um, asking you to be the on-time God that you are. God, I just ask that you will remove Brenda and, and allow people to see you, God. Yes, sir. Hide me behind your cross. Lord, I just praise you. I worship you, God. And I thank you for the word that you allow me to bring forth. It is in your holy name. Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Today, church, my sermon is some have witnessed our storms and thought we weren't going to make it. My, su- my subtitle is, But We Made It. Let me start with um, my scripture. It's coming from Hosea 6 and 3 from the NIV. Forgive me, y'all. I did it again. Last but not least, let me please... <laughs> Give honor to my amazing husband. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He is my boo. My Superman is what I call him. You look on my phone when it rains, it's Superman. And he is my more than enough. And I love him. Everything in me. Sorry, babe. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Do it twice. Okay. My scripture again is coming from Hosea 6 and 3 in the NIV. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As sure as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring that waters the earth. Okay, today I'm going to start. This is what the Lord gave me, church. I tried to change it several times, and he kept bringing me right back, so I'm going to go forth with what he's given me. Okay. Um, There's a song that I always play, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It's called, I Never Would Have Made It. I Never Would Have Made It Without You, Jesus. Um, That song got me through a lot of storms, knowing that God was was in every step of the way. As I was reading the word of God, I never made it, gave me inspiration to hold on when situations felt hopeless. When I felt like giving up, how many of you ever felt like that? I think back to some of the many storms in my life, the ones that would make me fall to my knees in gratefulness that God did not destroy me in my mess. Has anyone ever had those days? When you felt like you weren't worth it, but were glad that he spared your life. I started thinking, sorry, I started looking back on my life from my childhood all the way back to to three years old. And my mom is sending me to a place she thought it would be safe, but a place that, and a place that could teach me early in life not knowing that that day was gonna change my life forever. One of, the, one of my life storms that that day was tragic for many families. Our school bus was in a fatal accident that caused three children to lose their lives. That was, that was a sad day for many parents whose children were on that bus that morning. I couldn't begin to imagine the pain of hearing the, re- excuse me, I couldn't begin to imagine hearing the pain of the report of the names of the children that didn't make it. To my parents, I'm sure waiting to hear if their little girl was on the list of being deceased after having that report that there was one little girl that did not make it. 
I'm sure their hearts were full of despair and grief. But later to find out that I was taken to the hospital, when my mom arrived, she found her little girl safe with only a broken leg and some scratches here and there. Not to downplay the accident, it was very serious. I just want, wanted you to know I'm still thanking God for his shelter that he had placed in my life that day. And because of the shelter that he put in place, I can stand before you today. Amen. Don't we serve a good, good God? Yeah. My heart will always go out to the families for the loss of their children. For my family, I just wanted to say, but God. Hallelujah. That I had survived, never would have made it without you, Jesus. Even when I didn't know who Christ Jesus was, the shelter from the storm that would enter my life. He was preparing me for this day. You don't know how blessed, and to, how blessed I am to stand before you to give you honor to many. Don't you know my story? Excuse me. You don't know my story. But I was called about 20 years ago and have been running for a long time. I accept the call officially this year waiting on God to affirm, I'm just like some of you, you're still running. My advice to you is to stop running. God is soon to return, and we want to be, we don't want to be caught with his work undone. Because of the many storms in my life, I used to say, God, how can you use someone like me? As a child, I struggled in school. I didn't have a lot of friends. I always felt like I was picked out to be picked on. How many of you felt that? Thinking and keeping female friends even to this day is still hard. I'm finally understanding that relationships I have been trying to hold on to, God has been allowing them to fall apart. We must learn to identify what is for us and what is not. Some friendships he didn't intend to continue because Everything has a season, and that's why he allows us, he's, he allows them to be dismantled. Can you say, God got my back? Yeah. Moving along, getting back to my parents being divorced early in my life, and me being the only child at that time, my childhood was a little difficult. I would always be looking for a friend, not knowing at the time that Jesus would be the only friend that I would ever need. Psalm 46 and 1, God is, is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. That's just how I felt back then. When I was a kid, I never knew that the storm was coming in my life the way that it did. As I continued as a young adult, I had more storms still going through, never really fitting in anywhere, always feeling different from people around me. Don't you know sometimes he will separate us from for our own good? Because of the call on our lives, he doesn't want us, he doesn't want certain things to poison us, to infect us, and to spoil us. And I'm talking about the spoil when food goes bad. God preserves us. Thank you, Lord, for sheltering me from the storm. I thank God for renewing my relationship with my mom. Thank God for mama. Young people, I just want to add to this. You need your mamas, okay? They have been through a lot, so they know enough to tell us the real deal. So it shows life can be one way and it can end up another. Just keep God first. Matthew 6 and 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. We all know it gets hard sometimes living this Christian life, but it's worth it. To, for God to have our back is worth it. Romans 8, 3, and 1. What, sh what shall we say? Then if God be for us, who cares who's against us? In Colossians, I'm coming from the NIV with this, 2, 6 through 7. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord to live your lives in him, root it and build up in him, strengthen in faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. When trials come, consider embracing them, knowing that God is with you. He has a purpose for it, and the storm will end. In John 16 and 33, 
these things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulations, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Thankfulness. One of my desires in life was to get married and have kids. After seeing so many failed marriages in my family, I would say to myself, because you know sometimes we do talk to ourselves, I'm going to have the best marriage, okay? The best children, we added, the, um, the smartest children, <laughs> and all good stuff we say to ourselves. Got into a marriage at 21 and thought I was ready. Started having children and became a mommy. Y'all, can I tell you something? It got real hard. Okay, I've always dreamed of being a mommy. I made my expectations too high. You know, sometimes we can put too much pressure on ourselves thinking we should be a certain way according to someone else's dreams for our life. No one has done that to us. We have done it to ourselves. And we wonder why it doesn't work. Because it is a lie from the very beginning. Anything else that means some, okay, marriages. We realize marriages are worth working for. And sometimes they are a lot of work. We gotta put forth that effort in order to have a good marriage. Um, and we also understand when we don't do that, it can sometimes fall apart. I went through thinking everything was going to be perfect. It's okay to come into a positive mind, but be real with yourself, but God. Being young and married, as a lot of us was, and had to work, we had to work hard, some of us worked a lot of hours a week, and a lot of young women was left home to take care of children, cooking, cleaning, and taking care of little ones, who was a handful spoiled because I wanted to give them everything I did not have. Does that sound familiar? Please reconsider. They, are, they need to be loved, structured, understood, and discipline. And if you continue to think that way, you may only create someone that may resent you later in life. Sometimes as parents, we try to live through our children because our unsatisfied childhoods, to give them everything they ask for, for now, and wonder why they're out of control. But me, allowing the enemy, the devil, to get into my head, because, get into my head, be careful with what you allow to come into your thoughts. The Bible tells us in Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Here we go, more storms brought on by, yeah, you know it, myself. Um, I got involved doing things <laughs> that married women should not have done. I would go to work every day thinking I'm minding my own business, at least that's what I thought. That's what I was doing, and the whole time I was, I was set, being set up to fail. And I would in, be enticed by the enemy to do the things I know that I should not do. I think Paul says it better in Romans 7 and 15. For that which I do allow, not for what I would, that do not, but what I hate, I do. You all have heard the grass is greener on the other side. Well, I'm telling you to water your own grass. Amen. When I really had no interest, but because I was bored, I allowed again the enemy to come into my family and tore it up. Adultery was introduced to our family. In our families, we cover up things instead of exposing the truth. We need more communication in our households. Then another storm was created in my life, but, a lot, but I allowed that storm in my life. Sometimes we give the right conditions for storms to enter our life. I allowed the enemy to come in and did what I allowed him to do, because again, he can't do nothing if we don't allow it. Those are some of the storms that can come into our lives, and if we are not careful, they can be dramatic. With the end of the year approaching, and Christmas and New Year's right at our door, I just wanna thank Jesus for bringing me through. I thought I knew, but it's been, it's been a very interesting year. 
I've been through a lot, you guys, just to stand here today. I understand why the fight was so hard. I'm just going to tell you a little bit, continue about my storms. I have been lied on, which made no sense. I have been talked about. I have been bewitched. I have been sabotaged, including assassination of my character. And you say, but God, church. I would like to share with you the saying that I've heard when I was young, and I do not believe it's biblical, but forgive me, it was kind of funny. You may have heard this too. Satan doesn't have any new games. He just have new players. We, we, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. The Bible tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. And the enemy uses anyone or anything, and that's without a shadow of a doubt, that we must be grounded and rooted in Christ. You know we all go through trials, and they come to make us strong, not to destroy us. People refer to them as storms of life. I have a question for you. How many of you like storms? Whether it's a spiritual or physical storm, not many people like storms. Rains, winds, thunder, lightning, unless you're home cozy in your beds or just doing nothing, we can tolerate it. When we, were, when we have things to do, it becomes a little bit irritating, right? Those are physical storms. But what about the spiritual ones? We all can agree storms are not fun, right? I, have you ever tried to walk, work in a storm? Well, let me tell you a true story. For the 16 years I worked outside, I worked as a postal worker. Let me tell you something. I think what I hated the most about this job was going to work in the middle of a storm, and I would look at the weather report the night before and say to myself, oh, I'm not going to work tomorrow. Knowing good and well, I had no choice. So I would get up, dress, and head out, only to have cold rain hit me in the face. I, pre I, excuse me. I proceeded to work. Working for the post office was one of my hardest jobs I've ever known and I've ever heard, have, you, have ever had. Have you guys ever heard the slogan, rain, sleet, or snow? Yeah, that's the post office motto and they meant it, right, cuz? <laughs> we both worked for years being in the storm, and the storm also changes our mood. And we're going through your spiritual storm, we don't feel good either. We want it to be over. So we just push through with the help of the Lord, praying, fasting, and calling on our prayer warriors, right? Even calling our poor pastor who already has a lot to do. We call on whoever can help us, get us through. Just like our physical storms, it will pass. Usually after a storm has passed, the sun comes out. That sounds like our spiritual song, excuse me, that sounds like our spiritual storms also. Again, these are called life storms. We go through our life storms and when it's over, we are still standing and stronger than before. Just like the storm I would encounter before I would get up to go to work, when the sun came out, oh, I knew I could make it. I can make it through the day. And when it was over, I was glad that I did not stay in bed. Uncomfortably as it may, as comfortably as it may have been, I still had to push through. Some of you, some of you here today are going through a storm. Some of you don't know you're going to make it through this one. Some of you don't know how you're going to make it through this one. I can hear you saying, Minister, but you don't understand. I had just lost a loved one. And I just found out that I have cancer or some other disease. Or I was just diagnosed with diabetes, high blood pressure, and I'm headed for a divorce. My children acting up. It doesn't matter. The answer is Jesus. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for us. Just throw it on him and let him carry your burdens. Mm -hmm. Jesus said we could cast all, can y'all say that? All of our cares on him because he cares for us. There is nothing that we cannot cast on the Lord. Amen. No matter the issue, give your storm to Jesus. He is the answer. He allows storms from the very beginning in our in, my, in, in our lives. In my closing, God did, not, did God not provide for Noah? 
That was a storm. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm sure Nora was probably afraid, nervous, and all the above. The same things we feel while we're going through our storms. But remember, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of the power and love and of a sound mind. That flood took faith, courage, and a desire to live. He had no choice but to continue trusting God. We have no choice but to continue trusting our God. He will see us through. Hebrews 13 and 8, he never changes. He is just faithful, loving, and we can count on him to be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We can depend on him. Sometimes when we depend on people, y'all know, most of the time, they are going to let us down, but not Jesus. He is with us, he is with us till the end. So when your, storm does, when your storm does come, don't try to figure it out. Get out of the way of God. Take shelter under the Almighty until the storm is over. Most of the time, God is trying to get us to realize he is trying to get and also trying to get our attention. In my closing, I am so blessed to have had those storms in my life. They made me who I am. Um, I have a daughter, and she would always tell me, Mom, when I grow up, I pray that I'm just like you. You, you care for people. You treat people the way you want to be treated because that's what we were taught. You tolerate, and I would tell her, all that you see is a process. My love for God got me here. It takes molding to get us here, and I'm grateful that God spared my life. Going through those storms also helped me to be a better wife to my husband, who I love so dearly, and a better mom who listens and allow them to live their own lives with giving suggestions but, can, but can't live for our children. To my kids and my kids that God has blessed me with, I raise my standards on who I want it to be and not anyone else's standards. The reason I'm telling you this is because some of you need to hear this. Don't look at people and get jealous about what someone, when someone else has, their anointing, the way they live and what they drive, even the relationships because you don't know what they've been through to get it. One more thing. I want to give y'all this before I sit down. Deuteronomy 31 and 8. The Lord himself, remember this. 31 and 8. The Lord himself goes before you and be, will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Worry about, don't worry. Why worry about your storm that you can't control anyway? Give your storm to Jesus. He's better equipped to handle the storm. Storms come in our life sometime to remove some things. Think about the storm that comes in the springtime. It comes to wash down the pollen that gets kind of irritating. What is your storm coming to do? Is it coming to clean up some things or to make us strong where we are weak? It is coming to cleanse your faith and coming to straighten, strengthen your flight in you. Remember to stay focused and anchored. Thank y'all so much. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Glory. We thank God for the word on this morning. The messenger told us that some have witnessed our storms and thought we weren't going to make it. But we made it. Hallelujah. I wonder if you can say that you made it. Hallelujah. And listen, if you haven't been through any storms yet, I'll tell you like my dad used to say, you just keep living. Because storms are going to come to each and every one of us. But it's always good to have Jesus with you in the midst of the storm. And you know one of the, the best ways of making it out of the storm expediently? Y'all want me to give you something to help you?
to make it out of the storm faster? Yes. Y'all ready? Uh, y'all sure y'all want this now? Yes. This is some good information for you now. The way you can make it out of the storm faster is by sending up some praise. All right, all right, yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, you, I know you're saying, well, Pastor, what is that going to do? Well, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. All right, all right. All Y'all will get it in a minute. Y'all will get it in a minute. So if you praise God, then God comes down in his tangible form. Lord, have mercy. All right. And when God comes down in his tangible form, then that means that anything that is not like God yes, yes. Oh hallelujah somebody Anything that is not like him has to go Remember now when, when Jesus was with his disciples And the disciples were They were fighting a storm But you know Jesus was down in the bottom of the ship he was sleeping. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And sometimes Jesus is sleeping in the midst of our storms. But you know what will wake him up? Just tap your neighbor and say, just some praises. If you praise him, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And listen. When Jesus came up out of his sleep and he came to the top of the ship, all he said to the storm was peace. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had some. He said, peace. Be still. I don't know about you, but I want Jesus with me in the midst of my storm. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give our messenger a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Ah, just push your neighbor and say, we made it. We made it. We made it. We made it. Oh, come on. Come on. Tell them, we made it. We made it. We made it. Through all of the afflictions, through all of the persecution, through all of the trials and... Ooh, we made it. Yes. We made it. I don't know about you, but I'm happy because I made it. Right. Oh, hallelujah. And you know another thing about storms? Storms always takes you higher. Reason why some of us can't grow because we don't want to go through nothing. But you got to go through something in order for you to be elevated in the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After hearing a message like this on today, there might be one in the congregation that do not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. You might say, well, Pastor Miller, what are you saying? Well, there might be one that is not born again. And according to John 3, Jesus says that a man must be born again in order for him to see the kingdom of God. He said that a man must be born of the water and of the spirit in order for him to even enter into God's kingdom. We might have one today that is not born again. But after hearing this message, you have felt a tugging in your heart to come and give your life to Jesus. There might be one that may be watching us live via social media, and you have heard this word, and you have been compelled by the Spirit of God to come and to give and to vote your life to Jesus. If you're watching us live via social media, if you would, please 
Repeat this short and simple prayer after me. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, please forgive me of all my sins. Say, now God, I accept Jesus as Lord. I believe in my heart that he died and you raised him from the dead. And therefore, I thank you now, God, for saving me this very day. Come on and put your blessed hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. If you repeated that short and simple prayer after me today, today your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now born again. And if you don't have a church family, we're going to ask if you would please uh, leave us a comment in the comment section and we'll have one of our social media administrators to reach out to you immediately following this service. God bless you and we love you all.